This sort of thing has cropped up before, and it has always been due to human error. Sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Hello, friends, and welcome to another special episode of Gaming Retro. And today I've got Hal with me. This is my main uh, daily driver, and as you can probably tell, uh, it is a sleeper PC, so it has all the modern components in there and an old, eh, roughly 30, 25, 30 year old case. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to show off my latest uh, sleeper project here. I have built other sleeper computers, and I do plan on um, making videos of those here in the near future. Uh, but this one, this one I built actually just over this past summer, and um, you know, I had a four-year-old uh, computer. It was starting to show its age, and the new Ryzen CPUs came out, of course. And I thought, you know, it's a good time to upgrade. So I just bought this computer off of eBay, this 486 at the time. And um, I, you know, I thought about, you know, buying a new case essentially for the new computer. And I thought, why not uh, go ahead and make this kind of retro futuristic uh, sleeper build instead. And um, yeah, I think it came, uh, uh, came together quite well. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Again, I've done other sleeper computers, but I think this one's probably my favorite uh, so far. And, um, you know, definitely inspired by uh, the film 2001 A Space Odyssey, which was, was kind of a revolutionary film, you know, in terms of its overall sci-fi motif. And I tried to capture, you know, the aesthetics of that film and, and just of science fiction of the time. And, uh, you know, that's, it's a lot of blacks and whites uh, is a big part of it. And um, it's kind of mixed in with some bleaking lights, uh, kind of computer technology, you know, look to it, um, very science fiction-y. And, uh, yeah, I mean, as a kid, you know, this would have screamed futurism to me, even though it's, you know, obviously an old case. Um, but just the fact that, you know, the, the white, how bright white it was, fits in very well with, uh, essentially the the style of what the future was going to be like uh, when when we were imagining it back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So um, yeah, let's take a closer look at it. I'll kind of talk about some things on the outside and then open up the case. And, you know, the big, big thing here was converting it, you know, from an old AT style case into a modern uh, mini ATX case that could handle a modern motherboard and all the components that went along with it. So you know, there's some pros and cons of these old cases, but um, there's there's definitely some big challenges to making a conversion like that. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and I'm excited to show you uh, what I've done with this case here. Before we get any further, I wanted to point out some things uh, right here up front uh, with the case while it's still plugged in, and so you can see some of the lights and so forth in action. And I'm, you know, I'm not a huge fan, actually, of RGB and kind of the flashy uh, cases and the windows and all that it doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, it's probably because, you know, I'm as old as I am and the, the idea of computers, you know, was, was not really as flashy as, as uh, modern RGB lights, but that kind of retrofuturism of 2001 and so forth. There, there were always a lot of blinking lights, though. I mean, that's how you kind of knew that the computer was, you know, thinking and working and doing what it's doing. So I try to incorporate that here um, with these lights. And these are all, these lights here all, you know, came with the original computer, the, the 486 that was in there. Um, hard drive light, turbo light, power light. And, of course, I added uh, the LED light that uh, came with the new power button here. But uh, for those of you that may not know, I don't know if there's anyone out there that uh, has never heard of a turbo button, but um, these were pretty common back in the day. And from about the late 80s to the early 90s, when you know people were still running programs essentially from the, the earliest IBM computers 
in the, the from the early uh, 80s, and those ran at, at 4.77 megahertz. So, you know, even if you had a 50 megahertz 46 or something like that, you still needed to slow it down. And oddly enough, that's generally what the turbo button did. It didn't speed up the computer. It it would slow down the computer to that 4.77 megahertz, maybe, or to something at least slower, maybe 10 or 20 megahertz. So we get closer to that slower speed. So I've got that on there, and I've just got to activate it. It doesn't actually do anything. You know, I'm sorry to disappoint, but it doesn't actually do anything on this computer because there's nothing, you know, nothing to slow down or speed up, really. Uh, the light down here, the, the how light, um, is really just two kind of rubber feet uh, glued together and then put into this hole. Now, that hole was there. Um, it would, there was a little piece of plastic in the back, but... Uh, it was really easy to remove that piece of plastic and then just use this hole that was already there. So, I mean, you can see it in the old uh, image over there of the computer before modification. And, uh, I, I, you know, I don't know for sure what that hole was for originally, but, you know, maybe it was to let out the sound a little bit um, from, the, from the computer, the internal computer speaker. I mean, it's the only thing I can really think of. And then the HAL 9000... A uh, nice little metal pen. It, it was just a regular pen, you know, that you would wear, I guess. Uh, but uh, cut off the back end of it and just glued it on there. I thought that was, I think that was kind of neat. I mean, I just kind of came across that on eBay and it's like, oh, that, that'll probably work. Uh, I've got the floppy drive here, three and a half inch. Uh, not an actual floppy drive, as you can tell. You know, I've got a USB in there, 3.1. So it's just the front. It's just the front of the the floppy drive. Took that off, painted along with the case, and so that it would all match, and then attached it to a um, three and a half inch uh, drive bay in there, and then attached the USB to that as well. And the, the CD-ROM drive is also painted, the, took the front off of it and uh, painted it. So you can take off this part and then the main part I left the button alone because, you know, I didn't want it to clog with paint. So that uh, that is original. Yeah, I just, I really like the aesthetic of, of the lines and everything that you find in these, these older cases from, the say, the early 90s or so and the 80s. Yeah, the, the vertical and horizontal lines and just the way it's compartmentalized. I, I like that as well. It really kind of gives off that retro futuristic 2001 uh, vibe and really just sci-fi vibe from from uh, the late 20th century. So um, I think that kind of wraps up what what's going on here in front. Oh, I didn't mention the uh, the lock. And so the key lock was a standard feature of computers again back from the sort of mid 90s to the early 90s and maybe into the 80s a little bit but uh, they disappeared basically they would lock out your keyboard in most cases and not allow you to use the computer um, because I don't need that um, and you know uh, motherboards don't really have that function anymore uh, the the wires that this is attached to don't go anywhere uh, in the case so Sorry to disappoint on that as well. That's aesthetic. I do have the key for it, but you know it just doesn't do anything to the computer anymore. It'd be, be nice to be able to do something maybe in the future, use it as a switch to turn something on and off. Um, I would say that maybe at some point I'll add some more USB ports here because one is kind of limiting. I do have a hub, but every once in a while I wish I just had maybe a couple more USB ports there. So that's something I'll think about uh, in the future. So that's uh, unplug it and uh, take a look at the other sides and then uh, go ahead and open it up. All right, so here we've got the back of the case and uh, this is this is kind of uh, perhaps the most exciting part, in fact, of the whole build because um, what I needed to do here, and you can see the uh, what it used to look like, you know, as an AT style case, and it was obviously uh, much different from what it turned out. And, um, you know, in order to put a modern motherboard, which is what I wanted, and, and the other components of a modern system, uh, in this case, in this AT-style case, it really required essentially cutting out, you know, the, the AT-style part 
of, of the back. And what I ended up doing is replacing it with a section that I cut out of a, a fairly affordable aluminum um, uh, ATX, mini ATX case. So I literally took out the back of a mini ATX case, a modern mini ATX case, along with the side panel, uh, not the whole side panel, just the part that, that the motherboard attaches to, so the internal to the case. And that way it could accept, you know, the modern motherboard and, and uh, video card and, and other things. And, you know, another benefit there is that um, you're going to have better airflow because, you know, I've got the fan here, you've got some holes here that allow more air to get through. And you, you didn't have that uh, in old cases for the most part. You know, old um, AT style cases uh, did not have very good airflow at all. In fact, you know, they weren't really set up for uh, fans in a lot of cases, or if they did have a fan, it was just one in the front or maybe a very small one in the back. But even then, that was pretty rare. So, you know, um, computers these days get very hot and obviously need a more airflow than that AT case allowed. So uh, I'll show you this again when we open up the the outside of, of the case and take a look at the inside. But um, yeah, I was kind of, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. I put some uh, screws and nuts in here in order to hold it in place. You can see them here. So that's really what the main thing that holds it all together here. But uh, yeah, that allowed airflow and obviously to put all the main uh, modern components in there. So I think we have to lift this up a little bit to show you uh, what's going on here at top. And this was not here, um, but I, again, you know, recognize that I'm going to need to let the heat uh, get out of this case. And so I did cut a circular hole in the top using a Dremel and then use this uh, plastic um, material to go around the, the fairly sharp edge. I did file it down, but it's still pretty sharp. I mean, this is... You know, this is a solid steel case. In fact, it's one of the one of the things I really like about um, these old cases is that they're they're really nice and solid. Um, the downside, though, is again the the airflow and the fact that uh, it is also pretty pretty heavy. And um, if if uh, if you do cut anything, it's going to have really sharp edges. And in fact, even if you don't cut anything, these cases were known to be kind of dangerous that they would have you know, rather sharp uh, corners and so forth. Uh, not like modern cases, aluminum cases, that all tend to be nice and rounded and aren't nearly as dangerous. But um, yeah, I just put um, a little metal uh, covering that I had to kind of keep the dust out. And uh, these are these are pretty common to find online, just a few bucks. Uh, I also recognized that uh, that, that that wasn't going to be enough either in terms of airflow. And in fact, um, the uh, video card, my GTX 1080, is positioned about right here near the bottom. And it's it's not a blower style, style, style card. It's just um, it has a dual fan set up. And so it actually blows the air out uh, this way. And so I actually, I had everything together and I started up and I did some stress tests on it and I realized that the case was getting extremely hot and the video card was overheating and what I needed was another mesh down here uh, to let all that hot air out. So it does literally blow air um, out of the side of the case now that I've got this hole in here in this mesh. Um, so I used, um, on this one I didn't use a Dremel, I actually used a steel cutting a jigsaw to produce that hole. So that turned out pretty well. And um, yeah, with the airflow coming from the front, as you'll see when I open it, I've got a fan in the front, fan in the back, and then these two holes, uh, I think allow enough airflow through. I mean, it's it's not, it's still not as good as say a really high quality um, modern case, but it's one of those, you know, it's one of those trade-offs that, that you're probably going to have to make um, if you want to use an old case like this with all modern components. So that's the outside 
um, let's go ahead and take the uh, top of the case off and take a look at the inside. It always wants to stick a little bit, so that's the thing with these old cases. They, they would lift off upwards like that. All right, so we've got uh, a better look at the inside here. And um, I've got a 600 watt power supply. Uh, it's kind of an issue because you notice the really terrible cable management here. Well, you know, I'll take credit for some of it, but some of the issue is actually that um, I had to put the power supply in here essentially upside down um, to where it is usually. Usually these cables, you know, are coming out the back in the other direction, but just the way that this case is configured, it needed to go this way in order to fit in there properly. So now I've got all the, you know, all the main cables coming down front, which is kind of awkward and, um, does affect airflow a little bit. I've got a 120 millimeter fan in front, 80 in the back. And so there's, there's airflow there, but these cables uh, do get in the way. Um, I rather like the, um, the uh, CPU cooler I have, the Be Quiet uh, Pure Wings 2. Um, not, you know, the very best cooling, but on the Ryzen 3600 CPU I've got, I mean, it doesn't run that hot and this does a pretty good job, stays quiet. Um, it's a low profile cooler, so it's not rubbing up against the case either, which is great. Uh, see, I've got, uh, the GeForce 1080, which is, you know, it's not top of line, I know, but, um, I was able to get it for a reasonable price last year after prices came down and not being a huge, you know, triple A, uh, graphics intensive gamer, um, this, this card still works fine for me today and probably will for another year or two in the future. And I've got kind of a, a neat little tray. Um, I don't know exactly how well you can see it here. Hopefully you can kind of make out what I'm talking about. Uh, this tray here, which is, you know, five and a quarter inch drive tray actually holds three hard drives. So we've got two SSDs and one regular hard drive in there. And then actually another SSD down here in, um, in another tray. And then, uh, the USB, um, that's, that's the tray there for that floppy drive. So the floppy drive is just the front. So it's not an actual drive and then the USB 3.1 cord comes up through here and attach it through using some bolts to hold it down make sure it doesn't go anywhere when you're plugging in you know uh, uh, your flash drive and um, yeah that's held down held down with bolts as well so it doesn't slide around but yeah so um, you know constant challenge with airflow with the top of the case you can kind of see why you know, it's so important to have that hole in the top because, you know, one, the, the, the uh, power supply needs to be able to breathe and suck in some cool air, but also, you know, you need to be able to let some of that warm air that rises through the case out. So it, it serves those two purposes, even though a lot of that warm air does get absorbed by the power supply and then blown out the back. So yeah, it's a really quick rundown. Um, the main challenge, uh, sort of constantly being with these old cases, the airflow, but you know, and it's not, uh, even with these modifications, I wouldn't say it's as good as say, um, just a regular modern case, um, tends to have pretty good airflow, but it's a lot better than it used to be. And I am pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, adding the, the side window did help a lot with, with the overall thermals and helping to get you know, that air away from the uh, video card. So before I close up the case, I did want to show the other side here. And this panel that you're looking at, this nice uh, solid steel panel, um, is original to the case. And in order to get this to accept a um, modern motherboard, again, I had to basically extract part of a modern ATX case. And part of that was the back that I already showed you, but the other part of it is, you know, the this the side panel that the motherboard actually attaches to. So what I ended up doing, and, and luckily this fit in there really well, is cutting that out of that, that uh, newer modern case and just bolting it essentially um, to this original panel. 
And so you can see the new panel and the old panel. And uh, so it's the new panel that has the, the right holes in the right location and so forth to accept that mini ATX motherboard, which you can probably kind of see uh, through here. But um, so this is these bolts here uh, indicate where the, the new panel attaches to the old panel. And then you can also see here uh, in various parts where, um, and here too, up here at the top, uh, where the motherboard attaches to the new panel there. So it's really this plus, you know, the back side um, where I attached the, the new ATX uh, components that allows um, all the new hardware to, to fit in this case. I did actually have to cut this um, here in order to not have any issues with the motherboard actually rubbing up against um, these uh, drive bays here. So I think I'll kind of wrap things up here. There were a couple things that came to mind as I was uh, making this recording that I didn't mention yet. Um, one is, you know, the Hal light, uh, just a regular LED light, um, but uh, it is connected to the hard drive light. So there's just a Y splitter there. The light is blinking. This one will be blinking as well. So it's kind of a way to show uh, that the computer is you know, actively doing something. And so that's the, the how part of it uh, here. Um, the other one is the power button, which you know, is just kind of a basic momentary switch, but has the LED ring on it. And um, I actually bought this, it was about $30 on frozen CPU uh, and uh, came you know, pre-wired and everything. So um, that was pretty easy to use. And then, uh, the turbo light is another Y split with the power light. So whenever the power is on, the uh, the turbo light is on and, you know, the power button light is on. So the turbo button light is essentially redundant here. It doesn't really show anything unique, but um, so there's no turbo function. But I just kind of like having all the lights there, especially the combination of red, uh, yellow, and uh, green. I just think that I mean, it just reminds me of older computers and uh, the LEDs that have been in older computers for, for decades now. So um, gives it, uh, I think it helps gives it that, that uh, kind of retro futuristic look. So thank you very much for uh, watching. And um, I do plan on coming out with a lot more videos in the future. And so I, I hope that you will come back and uh, you know either subscribe or just kind of check back in the future and uh, see what we've got. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye.